Hello everybody, welcome back to Brothers in Air. Back again of course with the Flash Pup. And um, today I'm going to cover in this video uh, the Quattro Trigger uh, and, and its adjustment, its adjustability. And uh, I'm, you know there's plenty of videos out there um, on YouTube and stuff like that about how to adjust the Quattro Trigger um, on the Hots on Guns. So uh, I'm not going to cover necessarily how exactly to uh, do it, I suppose. But um, what I will do is, is show you how I have mine adjusted and set and uh, give you a couple tips and pointers um, as far as, as doing that and adjusting it. Um, just just uh, some things that I think might help you um, along the way, especially if it's your first uh, time with one of the, the Quattro triggers. Um, so... Outside of being able to obtain a really nice, clean, light break um, because of the trigger's adjustability, um, I, I found that I had uh, a, a couple issues with the trigger system on the Flash Pup. And, and um, the trigger's excellent, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, I found it to be a great trigger, and, and all I did was make it um, an excellent trigger. So. For me, um, I began to notice right away after a couple months of use um, that my safety, when I was flipping it off and on, it had become uh, kind of just sloppy, you know, and spongy, and it felt weird, and really no definitive click into the off or on position, um, and not much really holding it there either uh, in the off or on position, you know, and what had happened is there's a detent ball inside of there and that detent ball had become in its compressed position uh, stuck there you know so it wasn't popping into the two receiver holes um, for the off or on position of the safety anymore and the reason why it started doing that is just from the natural accumulation of dust and stuff to work its way up and inside of inside of the trigger uh, the front assembly here you know um, and they just had so much grease in there everywhere uh, that, that, that everything kind of got gummed up. And that ball, like I said, it just got stuck in the down position and it wasn't able to, to snap up into them holes any longer. Um, so that was one of, the, one of the things that led me to um, tuning and you know, opening up and looking at this front uh, trigger assembly on the flash pup. And the second thing is... Uh, like I said, the trigger was excellent, and I really liked it and appreciated it. Um, outside of the linkage on the Flash Pup, uh, e even with that in mind, um, the trigger is just great. I, I really enjoy the trigger on this gun, and, and I think it's, it's a great, great trigger. Um, even better than, than other guns I've had experience with uh, that also have the Quattro trigger. And uh, I, I've just been able to, to get this trigger just right, and, and I just love it so much, you know, so... All that aside, I did have um, one other complaint, and what that was is that in the trigger blade, the trigger lever blade here is aluminum, and then the uh, cover, you know, the steel cover in there, it's steel for the, the trigger assembly. There's a steel cover that fits on top of it, and there's about ten thousandths of an inch of gap in there. If you measure it with a feeler gauge or something, you'll see that there's about ten thousandths. Well, here, take a look. I'll show you a close-up. And you can see there's ten thousandths of an inch of gap in there. Um, and with that ten thousandths of an inch of gap in there, that was translating all the way down here at the bottom of the trigger blade, you know, into a sixteenth of an inch of movement left to right. Um, so not only was it noisy, well here, I'm sure you can probably hear this on the camera. You hear that? Well, I'm just barely even touching that trigger, you know. I'm just barely tapping on it uh, with my skin. And, you know, you can just hear how loud that is. And, and what that is is just that jingle jangle in there, you know. That ten thousandths of an inch uh, of play in there, like I said, uh, that translates into a sixteenth of an inch of movement down there at the bottom of the trigger blade, you know. Um, so... Also, when, when taking shots and, and adjusting, um, you know, my finger on the trigger for my shot and my, and my trigger pull, um, it just became kind of a nuisance and, and a bother to have that wiggle, you know, that slop in there and stuff. And it, it just gave the trigger kind of a, 
a low end feel, let's just say, you know, so um, outside of the trigger system being just excellent, uh, you know, especially at a $400 price point uh, on the gun, uh, you know, now sub 400 in a lot of places, uh, you know, that that's the trigger's great at that price. Uh, and, and I'm not complaining. So don't don't take me uh, to be a complainer. Um, but I did want to take care of that that slop in there, you know, because I just found it to be affecting my shooting, you know, when it came to really just extreme accuracy and pulling the most accuracy I could out of the gun. Uh, it was it was affecting my trigger pull to some small degree. Um, and so what I did is I thought, you know what, I knew that I would have to shim it, you know, like with a shim washer and I knew that it would have to be very thin. Uh, you know, if the gap is 10 thousandths of an inch, um, I was thinking probably, you know, like six or seven thousandths of an inch would, would be a good shim in there. Um, and rather than order some shim washers, uh, which could be kind of pricey, you know, and, and sometimes you've got to order certain minimum quantities of, of things and stuff like that. Rather than doing that, I thought immediately, what if I could uh, create something out of a set of feeler gauges? You know, what if I could make my own type of like a shim washer to go down in there and uh, take up some space, you know, so I didn't have that slop, that back and forth slop in the trigger so much. And so that's what I did. Um, and I made one that was five thousandths of an inch, six thousandths of an inch, and then I went and made one that was eight thousandths of an inch. So um, I made a few, you know, just so I could find what would work the best, you know, because I didn't want to get it too tight in there, um, you know, and like I said, I wanted to eliminate some of that gap, but obviously if you were to shim too much, uh, you're going to create friction and, and you're going to you're going to make it so that that trigger has resistance and it doesn't doesn't pull nice, you know, and freely and, and spring back real nice and stuff. So um, I made a few of them and all I did, you know, four thousandths of an inch is about uh, the thickness of a white sheet of printer paper, you know. So, like I said, I, I went with a five, a six and an eight thousandths of an inch uh, feeler gauge and made these shims out, out of the feeler gauge. And all I did was just cut it with the scissors, and uh, then I took some some uh, finishing paper, some 2,000 grit finishing paper, and just polished them up real nice, you know, and to take that burr off there from cutting it with the scissors, and uh, just to polish them up real nice and smooth, because I wanted them to really just free float in there and, and ride really nice and smooth as the trigger rocks back and forth, um, you know, on its axis on that pivot point. And so... That's one of the things I used. I'll recommend to any of you guys, if you're going to kind of dive in hardcore and get to, to working on your air guns, and especially when doing uh, any type of trigger work and trigger tunes, it, it would be a really great idea to invest in some different uh, sandpaper like this. And what this is, is just a wet, dry sandpaper. And um, I usually source these from like my local auto parts store, you know. And it, it, this is like a kit here that came, you know, and it's got 220, 400, 800, and then it's even got a, a, a 2000 grit, you know, for polishing and for that finish. Um, so like I said, I just took a sheet of the 2000 and uh, rubbed them shims down real good and nice, get any burrs or anything off of them and just polished them up real nice. And um, that's how I took care of that, that slop in there, you know. And that slop was... Uh, you know, it just makes the gun noisy too, you know, if, let me see here, if I cock the gun and leave it in the, in the rear cock position, that's going to kind of firm up and lock up everything in here. So it can't, you know, then the bolt handle and the bolt can't jiggle or anything and make any noise. So just listen to this. That's nothing but that trigger shaking back and forth, you know, and that just gave me such a, such a low end feel, you know, and then, and then, like I said, you know, in shooting the gun and taking my shot, you just bump the thing and, you know, it's just so noisy. And then a, a 16th of an inch rocking back and forth, um, you know, so it's just affecting my shot. So I had to take care of that. And, um, I'm going to show you how I did that in the video, but first I already took out my two stock screws. You know, you got one here and one right here in front of the, the trigger guard. And um, so I already removed them. So I'm going to take my stock off here and set it to the side. 
And then I'm going to set the gun up here in the uh, gun rest upside down, just like so. And I'm, I would recommend to any of you, uh, the first time that you adjust your quattro trigger, I would recommend doing it, uh, you know, out of the stock like this. And the reason for that is because then you can see exactly what's going on, you know. These screws, they thread into plastic here, the, the two frontmost adjust, well, the back one does also, but these two uh, frontmost adjustment screws that, uh, you know, they thread into plastic, and you want to make sure that you don't strip those out, you know. So if, if you think you're not all the way tight, but it actually, in fact, is, and then you keep cranking on it, you're just going to strip it right out, and that plastic's just going to pull right through your threads. And uh, any time that you do any adjusting or, or any work on your trigger like this, even, even just simple adjustments without taking the, the stock off even, um, that's not covered. You know, if you botch your adjustment process and, and do some, some ill thing to your, your, your trigger system and then it's not operating properly, uh, that's not going to be covered under your warranty. So you want to make sure that you take great caution in, in not stripping these out. And I would say that these, this is probably the most delicate part uh, of the whole gun because um, you know these these screws if they're stripped out you're screwed <laughs> literally I guess but uh you know these two screws one of them the front one here I'm gonna well here let's do this I'm gonna call it screw what you need to make these adjustments is a two and a half millimeter uh, Allen key so I'm gonna call it screw number one uh, for the frontmost screw, and then screw number two for the middle screw, and then I'm going to say screw number three for the rearmost screw. And so that's the way I'm going to refer to them. But screw number one here, the frontmost screw, uh, that screw is supposed to adjust the pull force of the first stage until you know that from 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 your start of your pull until you butt up against uh, your second stage. And that screw, in fact, if you, if you take a close look at, at a close-up of this, um, I'll show you. That screw is only protruding out just, just a hair, you know. So you've only got a, a turn and a half counterclockwise backing it out. And, and you, you're already recessed the screw into the plastic and you can't go no more. So on this number one, this frontmost uh, screw here, you've only got... A turn and a half of a worth of adjustment and then any further adjustment in the in the in the out direction counterclockwise uh, you know would just be for naught because you're not going to be doing anything um, that screws already like I said recessed into the plastic under there before uh, once you get to a turn and a half it's it's flush you know so anything beyond that is pointless so keep that in mind if you do um, want to make adjustments to that first number one front screw uh, you, you, and that's why I say take the gun out because then you can get down and you can look at it, you know, that first time. And when you tighten it down and you get it all the way tight to tight, you can watch it come down and, and also watch it kiss against the surface there. So you, you get a feel for just when tight is tight and, and when it's all the way down, just to ensure that you don't over crank it and strip out that plastic in there. So like I said, on this front screw, this number one screw, you've only got a turn and a half of adjustment. And I've got mine a turn and a half out. I don't like that screw uh, to play any part in my trigger pull. And the reason for that is, I don't find that it makes much difference uh, in the resistance of the first stage anyhow. Um, but what I did find is when that screw is engaged and I get to my second stage and then I pull to break my second stage, right at the very beginning of my second stage, or right just as I'm hitting it, uh, there's a little bit of creep in the, in, in the sear, you know? So it's not just a clean let go. There's like a little bit of creep, and then a second pause, and then it lets go when the second stage breaks all the way. And uh, here, I'll show you a close-up of it. So you can see uh, when, the, when the sear comes back and engages in place, you can see just for a second there's a little bit of creep, and then all of a sudden it lets go. And uh, I didn't want any of that, you know, that, that made my, my trigger brake feel kind of, gave it a little split second of a sponge to it almost, you know. So I like that number one screw, a turn and a half counterclockwise out uh, from being all the way down. And that completely disengages it and takes it out of the equation. 
And now for the number two screw. The number two screw actually is how you adjust the length of your first stage. And that length is, you know, like if you look again on the close up here, you can see uh, that that screw is protruding out a lot further than that first screw uh, through the plastic when it's all the way down. You know, when it's screwed all the way down in the down position, it's protruding out quite a ways. Um, so you've actually got three and a half turns worth of adjustment on this middle number two screw. On your first stage length, from that screw being all the way down in, you've got three and a half turns in the counterclockwise direction coming up until that screw would be just, you know, flushed and then from there on recessed into the plastic. Uh, so keep that in mind too. You, you don't have any more adjustability than a turn and a half on number one and three and a half turns on number two. Um, and the way that I have it set up is I've got my, my first, my first stage, I've got it set uh, a half a turn out from all the way tight. So I opened up the first stage, you know, from as small as you can get the first stage and that number two screw all the way down, I opened up that first stage a half of a turn's worth uh, on that screw. And that's a, that's a pretty short first stage. Um, but like I said, that's just where I found it to break the cleanest, you know. It, it really breaks clean right there and I can get a really light, light break without any uh, sponge to it, any creep. Um, just a really nice, snappy, uh, clean, safe break that's light. Um, and so that's pretty much uh, how you're gonna adjust your, your, your length of your first stage, you know, and you'll have to play with it and see what works best for you and, and, and how, you know, how you wanna do it. And like I said, the reason I'll do it all the stock first time, just so you can visually get all them, you know, get them two screws screwed all the way in down, flush with that plastic, and then start from there. And, th and then you know where you're at and you know where you started from just to make sure you don't strip them out or somehow over adjust, you know, and, and screw up uh, your, your, your system here. And now the number three screw. This screw here is the screw that dictates how much pressure it takes to get that sear to break on that second stage. So this number three screw is actually gonna, gonna allow you to, you know, as people say, what's your trigger pull set at? That's how you're gonna set the, the pound weight or ounce weight for your actual break point in your trigger pull. And uh, I, I prefer mine to be under a pound on any gun. And, uh, you know, I like it between maybe nine to 12 ounces, you know, and that's just, that's just where I prefer it. I don't like it any lighter than nine ounces. Um, anything lighter than that just, just feels too light to me. Um, but like I said, I like to be at least a pound, you know, a pound is, is, is the, is the, is the high limit for me, you know, a pound trigger I like, but I don't want to go any higher than a pound, you know, so um, obviously some triggers you don't have the adjustability and you're just left with what you're left with and you work with it best you can. Uh, but a light, a light trigger can, can definitely, um, increase your ability to maximize your air rifle's accuracy. Um, your trigger pull plays such a role and such a part in, in the, in the firing of your gun. And, um, that trigger pull and that break is happening, obviously, before the pellet leaves the barrel. So, it, you know, for instance, uh, the gun came stock right around like a, a two pound pull. So that's two pounds of pressure you've got pulling on that trigger and influencing the gun uh, before that pellet can leave the barrel. So obviously, the lighter you can get your trigger pull, um, the less influence that your pull is gonna have on the accuracy of your shot, especially in a PCP air gun. Um, so you, you, know, you gotta find what, what works best for you, what you like. You know, sometimes uh, certain people, you know, they don't like a really light trigger. Uh, you know, everybody seems to kind of have their own um, feel what they like, you know, for, for in a trigger, you know, so you have to play with it, you know, and make your adjustments and stuff that way. But um, like I said, this screw here, if you take it all the way out and screw it out here, I'll show you on a close up and we'll screw this screw all the way out. And then I'm going to use this little uh, pick hook deal to pull a spring out of here. And I'm just going to pull it out and lift it up and show you. 
it's just a spring in there that rests against the sear. So, let me get that back in. We'll tighten her back down. And that spring is what adjusts the amount of tension holding that sear in place. You know, so when you pull your trigger, it le it's a lever in there. And when you pull your trigger and those those screws or, or that screw engages on that sear lever, it actually pushes against the tension in this spring. You know, that's its resistance. So by changing the amount of tension on that spring, that's how you get your different break points and it takes a different amount of pressure for that lever to disengage off of the sear and let the hammer go. So let me get this where I had it pretty much. And I can kind of tell by looking at it, but we'll check it out uh, when we're done here and we'll, we'll uh, take a few pulls with the gauge, you know, and see right where we're at. And if I have to adjust it uh, to get it, you know, in the range where I like it, then, then we'll do it then. So that's how you address uh, the quattro trigger. It's as simple as that. Um, it's not very hard. And you just need to take extreme caution not to over adjust and strip out these screws. Cause like I said, it's not gonna be covered under your warranty. Um, and you're gonna be on your own as far as replacing these parts on here. Um, or, or, you know, you're gonna have to get uh, an even larger screw and re-thread your holes with a larger screw or whatever you, you end up having to do. It's just a hassle and it's very easy to make all kinds of adjustments on this trigger um, without screwing it up as long as you're careful and pay attention to exactly what you're doing. And another thing I might note is that I did take this whole rear assembly apart. Uh, not on camera, but I did take it all apart and I haven't polished the sear levers, you know, I haven't polished those sears where they make contact at all. And that's because I just didn't find it necessary. Um, mine came in a, in a very smooth, uh, nice polished condition. And, and I didn't feel that polishing them would improve my, my uh, break point that much. Um, so there's guns that I definitely have done that to. And it made a tremendous difference. But I didn't feel it was necessary in, in my flash pup. Uh, so I didn't do that, but I did take it apart because I wanted to see, you know, if things were greased and, and, and or oiled and how much of that was in there and clean that stuff out of there. Uh, I actually, I don't use any lubrication whatsoever inside of this whole uh, trigger assembly back here where the sears are contained. And there was just a, a touch of oil on the parts, you know, but not much. Uh, you know, it was actually so light that I wouldn't even consider it necessary for me to wipe it off, but I just did um, because I had the gun opened up. So uh, my sears are not polished. And like I said, I haven't found it necessary. So that's why I didn't do it. Uh, and if you're having problems and, and your, your break point, you know, when, you, when your sears break, you know, and even having the gun out like this and visually watching them through that little window, uh, you know, and taking a close look at them, maybe with a magnifying glass or something, if you can see that they're not smooth and they're, they're, you know, that's causing some, some actual resistance and some drag or some sponge into your, into your brake, uh, then it would probably be very worthwhile to open that up and take those out of there and get them polished up. Um, and I guess if there's enough guys that, that wanted to do that, but were apprehensive about opening this up on their own, um, I'd be willing, you know, if that's voiced, I'd be willing to, uh, open it up on camera and, and, and take it apart, you know, cause it is kind of delicate. It, it's actually, you know, the most delicate part of pretty much any air gun. Um, and you've got a lot of small pieces and stuff, you know, and a lot of small spaces where things go and stuff like that. So it can be kind of tedious and, and kind of frustrating at times, uh, but very doable. And, and, you know, it's actually a very simple, uh, setup to understand and, and stuff once you get up in there and stuff. So, um, I guess with all that being said, uh, let's get the gun down onto the table and we'll get this front trigger assembly opened up and throw a little tune on it and get our shim in there so we can, uh, take away this, this left to right slop in our trigger, you know, and, and get rid of that, that clinkety clankety noise, you know, and just that wiggity wobble that was, uh, bothering me, you know, and if it doesn't bother you, then that's fine. But, uh, like I said, it just gave me a real, um low end feel to what could be a very high end trigger, you know, in, in its feel. So, uh, 
like I said, let's get the gun down on the table and we'll crack up into here and bust this open and get some get some cleaning up and some tuning. And uh, I've already removed all the grease and everything and, and done this tune. Um, but I'll walk you through it so that you can you can see exactly what I did and, and how I did it and, and how this all goes together and, and what you've got inside of there. So, all right, let's get to it. All right, I got the gun laid down on the table and uh, a piece of foam up under the, the trigger assembly there just to support it. And um, the first thing you're going to do, you know, I don't know if you noticed in the other picture, these little bit of scratches here on my trigger blade um, that came like that from the factory. This little kind of gouge deal here. Um, that in fact came like that from the factory and uh, I found it to be not even noticeable with the stock on. Uh, you know, and unless, unless you're closely examining the gun, you couldn't even tell it's there uh, or, or unless the right light was hitting it. So um, obviously that's a small complaint, uh, uh, you know, a small mismanufacture and uh, probably shouldn't have, shouldn't have made it through quality control. But, uh, I, you know, I've found that the gun was awesome and, and I was willing to accept that as a small, small gripe on my end. Um, and it just is what it is. So, and I haven't had a problem with it. You know, I don't even, I haven't even remembered that it was like that, um, until now, it, until I'm seeing it on the camera. So anyhow, the first thing you're going to do is take a number one size Phillips screwdriver and you're going to want to get this steel plate off of here. This is kind of like a cover and is holding everything inside. So the first thing we're going to do is take these two screws out that hold that plate in place. And I'm just going to set them to the side in my little tray here off camera. So let's take this other one out. And unless yours is packed full of a bunch of grease like mine was, you should see that steel plate rise up as the detent ball spring pushes it up as you're loosening that last screw and taking it off of there. You can see how much the, the plate has risen up. Now there's a spring and a little... There's a spring and a detent ball in there up under the safety lever. So, and there's two little holes in the safety lever and they click into the on and off position. So the edge of the safety lever rides against this metal plate on the opposite side. And also the side of the trigger blade in here, it rides on right in here. You know, it pivots and rocks right on here. So once you get this up and off of here, this will just slip right off this plate. You can see that I did polish. Uh, I took some 2000 grit finishing paper and I polished this up just a little bit just to give the safety a, a, a smoother surface to ride on and the trigger blade, a, a, you know, a smoother surface to rock on there. Um, so that wasn't completely necessary, but since I was up in here, I did do that. So I'll set that plate down to the side. Now you can see that detent ball in there and the two slots for the on and off position of the safety. And you can see right now the safety is off and the trigger can be pulled. And if I was to put the safety into the on position and hold it down, now you can see that it's button. Let me hold it down with that. Now you can see that it's button up against the trigger there. And when I go to pull the trigger, the trigger can't go. So that's how your safety works from the on to the off position. And you can see the detent ball snaps into place in either one of those two spots. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of here. Oh, and I also, just real quickly, I took that same finishing paper and, and did a sand job on this side of the uh, safety lever. I, I didn't sand it all on the bottom side. I just polished this up a little bit and smoothed it out. Um, since it was going to be riding on this plate when it's going back and forth. And that's not usually something I would do or worry about, but since I was in there, that's why I did that. So this will just slip up and out of there, and this post here is fixed into it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't move or slide. It should just stay fixed into there, 
So I'm just going to set that to the side. And like I said, all this stuff in here uh, was completely packed up full of grease. And, and this was grease. It was just grease everywhere in here. Um, so I had to wipe down all of these pieces and clean them up real good. And now you can see there's the detent ball there. And it's just sitting right up on top of the spring below it. So now what I'm going to do is, is uh, snatch that detent ball up out of there. And I like to use a, a, a small magnet. You know, you can find them even like uh, the little extendable antenna style ones, you know, like at Harbor Freight or an auto parts store for, uh, you know, like reaching down into an engine uh, when you drop a bolt or something, you know. And I've just found sometimes it's, it's, it works well when working on my air guns for retrieving um, little things like this and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and snatch this ball up out of here with my little magnet. And that detent ball is no more than just a steel ball, you know. It's just like a little, a little BB, basically, like a little ball bearing. And I'm going to set that to the side. And I had to wipe down and clean up uh, the detent ball and get all the grease off of it. And what was happening, the reason why my safety was just kind of freely floating back and forth when it rocked and it wouldn't snap into the into the position of off or on really was because this whole entire spring in here uh this whole entire hole and everything was packed full of grease like right to the brim so what had happened was the ball had got compressed down in the bottom position and there was so much grease gunked in there it wasn't able to pop back up um so then when the safety was rocking back and forth there it, it, the, that detent ball wasn't you know, popping firmly into either of them, them holes, you know, for the on or off position. So I'm going to get that spring up and out of there. And like I said, with the spring, um, once I pulled it out, it was just packed full of grease. You know, the whole entire inner tubing of the spring here, the coils, everything, it was just packed full of grease. So I did uh, take some solvent and everything and clean that up and wipe it up and get all the grease out of the spring there. So I'm going to set that to the side now. And then um, another thing I had to do was, was wipe all the grease off, you know, from these surfaces here and uh, down in here where the, where the trigger blade rides and everything. Um, I had to clean the grease and stuff out of there. Up on here, you know, the back side of the cover and everything. I just removed uh, all the grease and oils that were in there and made it completely dry in there. Um, and that's what I prefer. I prefer to use a, a dry lubricant um, for, for almost every part of my, my uh, PCP air guns. Uh, and like I stated before, that you know it's just an all-weather lubricant for me. And uh, things aren't affected or changed at all when I take the gun out into cold temperatures. Um, it also doesn't attract any dust. Or, or hang on to the dust and dirt and stuff that might work its way up in through the, you know, the opening of the trigger blade area and, and kind of work its way into here. Um, so I just found that a dry lubricant like graphite works the best for me. So this surface of the trigger blade here, right around here, the trigger blade lever, you know, that's where that, that rides right against uh, the plate here, the top plate. Um, but I didn't find it necessary or, or the, you know, any need to, to polish any of this or anything. The, this aluminum was really smooth and, and, and nice, and I didn't think that uh, there would really be any benefits to the, to the trigger system by, by smoothing it out anymore or polishing it. So this will just slip right up and off of here. So I'm just going to slip it up and off and set it to the side like that. And now we've got everything out of here. So like I said, we clean up all the grease and everything, wipe down all the parts. And now what I'm going to do is stop the video for a minute because I'm not going to do it on video. And um, I'm going to get everything covered up in some uh, dry graphite spray. And I'm going to put dry graphite on the trigger blade here where it, where it makes contact in here and on the underside of it where it makes contact. And I'm going to put graphite onto this plate where the safety rides and where this, this trigger blade uh, lever rides on here. I'm going to put graphite on both sides of my little uh, eight thousandths of an inch shim that we're going to place up inside of there to take care of that little bit of slop in the trigger. And, and that's it. So I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll come back on and, and put it all together. And this shim is going to sit right up on this post. 
and it's going to sit right up in here. And also what that's going to do, uh, this plastic is the most not smooth, you know, it's, it's the roughest surface of the, of the, the uh, assembly here. So the bottom side of this, this trigger blade lever, it rocks and rides and it rides right up against uh, this hard plastic composite. So also that's another thing, by placing our shim right on here, well here, let me just do it quick. So what we're gonna do, once we get everything lubed up with graphite, we're gonna place our shim right on there like that. Now with the shim there, what that does is it raises this up. So now we no longer are making contact with the bottom of this along this, this uh, rough, rigid plastic composite, and we're only gonna be making contact on our shim here as it's free floating in there. And you can see it's up against uh, the air tube here and then it butts up against this part here. So it really can't move out of position from here at all. Even though the hole could be a, a smaller diameter, um, it, it really can't rock or move out of its position here. So once you assemble things, it's just going to seat down in there real nice and stay there. So let me pull that up out of there. Like I said, I'm going to stop the camera now. I'm going to get everything lubed up with some dry graphite spray, uh, maybe... Uh, also sprinkle some dry graphite into a couple spots while that sprays wet and I'm gonna let the uh, the carrier evaporate and everything dry up and then we'll get her put back together and uh, we should have a nice uh, firm feeling on and off position for our safety and that detent ball should be real real firm and quick snapping into place in those in those holes and uh, we should also have taken care of about a sixteenth of an inch of side to side uh, play in the trigger. So now, like I said, there was only 10 thousandths of an inch of a gap in here, but that 10 thousandths of, a gap, of an inch gap translates all the way down here into a 16th of an inch of movement left to right with the trigger. And uh, you know, that was just too much for me. You know, even with holding it down tight, it was just, it was just jingly and jangly uh, and give me a real cheap, cheap feel to the trigger, you know, and I, I wanted to really solid it up, you know, get it nice and solid and firm uh, and not have any play in there so I could really concentrate on, on a really good trigger pull, uh, you know, and pull the most accuracy I could out of the gun. So um, get everything lubed up with graphite and then we'll get back up on the camera and put everything back together. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, so I got everything sprayed down with uh, my dry graphite lubricant. And I applied dry graphite to both sides of the, the trigger blade here and on the underside uh, where it makes contact and rubs. And I sprayed some on the spring and on the uh, detent ball. And you can see there's no longer a sheen or shine uh, to that cover there. And I also sprayed uh, dry graphite on the cover. And I sprayed both sides of the safety lever um, up to here, from here on back to there, on um, both sides. Um, and then I sprayed dry graphite on my uh, eight thousandths of an inch shim on both sides. And then I applied uh, graphite all onto here, into this surface down on here, onto the, onto the plastic, and then all here and around here. And I'm gonna show you a little trick for that. Um, Obviously, if you use to come in with your spray and just try to spray it on right there, it's just going to inadvertently get everywhere, and you're going to get a, a you know a spray over onto everything else. And graphite can be uh, just a mess. So just give your can a shake and spray it for you know just a quick spray off onto a towel or a rag or something. And then what that's going to do is that's going to fill up your 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 spray tube with uh, graphite. So then you can just tip it like this and use it like a dropper and apply it like this. And you can just go around and apply it onto little places like that in a more of a precision manner, you know, rather than, than getting it all over the place. And you can see it's already that petroleum distillate carrier in there is already evaporating. Uh, you know, it's already dried up there and that graphite's just left behind, that dry powder. So... The first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to get a hold of my shim here and I'm going to put my shim in. So I'm going to drop it right on here. Oh, that's backwards. I'm going to drop it right on here where it goes. Right down in there like that. And then I'm going to take my trigger blade lever and swing it up onto the post there and drop it down into position. Then I'm going to take my uh, spring for my detent ball and I'm going to drop that right down into its hole. I'm going to get a hold of my detent ball here and set that right on top of the spring like so and now we can take our our safety lever and we can put the post in the hole and set that in there too and i'm going to set it in there in the in the off position with the safety not engaged and that way when we when we depress it down with the cover and push it down into position um it's not having to battle with this little part of the trigger blade uh, lever there where it engages, you know. So it's just easier to pop it down and into place like that. So now I'm going to take my cover, flip it over, and set it down right on the post where it goes. And I'm going to, rather than use the screws to draw it down and compress the spring in the ball completely, um, I'm just going to give it a push with my finger and hold it down while I put the first screw in. Uh, that way it's not just being slowly, you know, compressed down and it, it won't bind or anything like that. Then I know it's fitted down into its spot and going to stay there. So I'm going to snap it down in like that and get my first screw into here. And when you're screwing these screws in, uh, keep in mind that you're screwing down into plastic, that hard plastic composite. So once you get them tight, all you got to do is snug them down. You know, feel it get tight and then give it just a touch of a snug. So that screw is going to hold the cover down completely. I don't have to worry about it popping up or moving at all. And I'm going to get my other screw. Get this screw back in. And like I said, we just feel it get tight and give it a little extra crank. And that's all it takes. You, you definitely do not want to uh, strip these out, you know, whenever, especially even on your adjustment screws. You don't want to strip this stuff out. That's not going to be covered under warranty. And, uh, you know, hot sawn's not going to, they're not going to accommodate you in any way in getting that fixed. You know, you're on your own there. And um, Whenever you, you know, work on your air gun in these manners, you know, you void your warranty if, if you end up screwing something up. So, all right, we got it all back together now. And let's try our safety here. So now we got a really definitive click off and on, you know. It just really snaps in there nice. That detent ball snaps into its hole real quick and easy. And uh, it's just real definitive and nice. It's really smooth. There's no problem there. And as far as our trigger goes, we, we took care of all of that play, all of that wobble that was in there. And now that's gone because of our eight thousandths of an inch shim. So what I'm going to do is work the trigger back and forth just a little bit. You know, I just want to work that shim a little bit and work that graphite and make sure it's worked in good. And then we'll just make sure that our trigger's nice and free. You know, we don't want to feel any friction or any, any tightness. And we want to make sure that it snaps right back into, into place. You know, you want to make sure that you're not using too thick of a shim and binding it up in there. So, like I said, mine, you know, I had a, a ten thousandths of an inch gap in here, down in there. And you can see now, maybe if I move it over here, you can see... The edge of that shim right there, just barely sticking out. See, there it is. I can move it with, with, with this metal piece just a tiny bit. 
And that's just freely, free floating in there, you know. That's not, that's not going to move out of place. It can't go nowhere. That's all it can do is rock back and forth just like that. Because like I said, it's free floating in there. It's, you know, basically it's acting just like a washer. You know, it's just a, it's just a shim washer. And eight thousandths of an inch is about as thick as two sheets of, uh, you know, regular white printer paper. Um, you know, so that, that's how thin that, that shim is in there. Um, but that completely took care of that play. And now we don't have that, that wiggle wobble, jingle jangle going on no more in the trigger. Uh, and everything's solid there. So took care of that, that, that wiggle and that wobble. And now when the trigger's pulled, uh, it just feels really solid. You know, there's, there's no left to right movement anywhere. And that play is completely gone from there. And uh, that just made the world a difference for me um, in this trigger. You know, it was already a good trigger. Um, but taking that slop out of there, that, that jiggle and that play from left to right, um, and getting the trigger just real solid, uh, that, like I said, made a world of difference. Um, and now the trigger feels a lot more uh, high-end, if you will. You know, it, 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 taking that play out of there, um, it, it just gives it a more high-end feel. Uh, and it just made the trigger all that much more um, comfortable. And, uh, you know, it allows me to shoot the gun better. It allows me to, to shoot the gun more accurately. So that's my uh, trigger blade assembly tune and mod. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I hope that was helpful. And uh, let's get down to the real business and see what our uh, trigger pulls at here after we uh, get everything adjusted. All right, so I took the gun and put it back in the stock, you know, fixed back down, tight my, uh, my two stock screws that hold the gun into the stock. And I also threw my scope on quick. Um, you know, it just takes a second. I mean, just throw it on. I know right where it goes. And, uh, you know, just a couple torques with the inch pound uh, torque wrench on my lugs here. And, and we're back set, uh, ready to rock and roll that way. So I threw that back on and uh, fixed her down in the stock, like I said. And as you can see, you know, we, we tuned up this front uh, trigger blade assembly, safety mechanism, safety uh, assembly here. And um, the safety now is just really crisp. You know, I like it this way with it, with it dry in there without that grease, you know. And now I know that ball is never going to, that detent ball is never going to get stuck down uh, in, the, in the compressed position again. You know, it's just going to stay free floating and there's not going to be anything to hang it up in there. And without that grease in there, I don't have to worry about that, that dust and everything that's gonna come up and in and work its way in there, you know, inadvertently into the into the mechanism. And uh, I don't have to worry about that dust gumming up and hanging up in there and, and after a while just mucking up, you know, everything stays real nice and clean. And like I said, the safety is just, is just really crisp now uh, from the off and on position and really smooth, you know, it takes, uh, it's just really nice and smooth, just buttery smooth, you know, and just a really, like I said, definitive click and resistance holding it there. You know, that ball's just snapping into place uh, real well, just like it should. And um, and then we installed our shim into there. And, uh, you know, now this, this trigger's rock solid. You know, you, you could see before when I tapped on the side of it, that noise. You can't barely even hear that now. And that's just my skin hitting that sucker, you know. So now we just got two thousandths of an inch uh, uh, of play in there, which is is it's hardly even feelable. You know, you can you can you can't even barely rock that trigger back and forth at all, and um, it's just completely improved upon my ability and my you know made the trigger that much more solid. You know, a solid feel and and more comfortable and just increased my ability uh, to accurately shoot the gun. And, and squeeze that much more, uh, that little bit, you know, of, of extra accuracy out of it uh, by having that trigger nice and firm and, and also giving it that higher end feel uh, rather than that, you know, just kind of that cheap clinkety clankety feel. Um, so that's great. And, and I love it. I love this trigger and, and I love this gun. Um, and, and this thing is awesome. You know, that the, the trigger is you know, I had a couple guys I've seen on forums and different things saying that they, you know, they're having trouble getting their trigger uh, sub pound. And I, I guess I can't say, you know, I'm assuming that they have a, a pull gauge or, or you wouldn't necessarily know 
uh, if you're going sub pound or not, you know, but, but, uh, I hope this video is helpful, you know, to guys like that. And, uh, you know, I don't really necessarily know what, what your exact problem is and why you can't get, get your gun sub pound, you know, but, uh, I did show you, you know, how, how I, how I tuned mine and set mine up, you know, and, and mine is definitely sub pound and I'm even able to safely get it down to about, you know, five ounces on the break. Um, and like I said, safely, the key word is safely, uh, but I don't like it that light, you know, like I said, I prefer about nine, nine to 12, uh, you know, around a pound at the, at the very heaviest. So, um, now the most important step in a trigger adjustment process is what I'm going to show you next. So the most important thing is that we don't ever hurt somebody, right? Hurt ourselves, hurt somebody else. Uh, you know, send a pellet flying, in, you know, in any direction we weren't intending to or striking any object we weren't intending to. Uh, basically, we don't ever want the gun to go off um, at any other time than when we were ready to shoot and at our intended target and we pulled that trigger and, and physically pulled it ourselves. So if you adjust your trigger from its factory settings at all, um, you should definitely do this, especially if you adjust your trigger uh, lighter or to the light end. Because what can happen is if you drop your gun, or say you trip and fall, or you you know you know you bang it on a tree or something, those vibrations you know and that jolt. If your trigger is set too light, those vibrations and that jolt could very well knock that sear loose out of place, and now your gun's going off. You know, and heaven forbid, you know, like you was out with a buddy or a family member or something and and they were walking in front of you you know and you and you smacked your gun onto something or you dropped it or something and and now you you just uh you know shot your buddy or your you know your son or who knows what you know uh or maybe you even just shot out the neighbor's window you know because of it or whatever you know but you, you never want your gun going off on accident and you can definitely get it to an unsafe uh position in, in your adjustment if you go too light um, so what I like to do is I just take a rubber mallet uh, with my adjustable triggers, you know, and basically I just try to simulate uh, a, a drop or a fall, you know, and create a lot of a, a jolt and a vibration um, through the gun. So I'm going to go ahead and cock the gun and the safety's already off. And obviously there's not uh, a pellet or any kind of projectile loaded into the breech right now. So the gun, you don't want to do this with the gun loaded, obviously. But then I'll take my rubber mallet and just kind of bang on the on the butt plate here, you know, onto the pad. And I'll, I'll give it a good smack, you know, and really get some vibrations going. And maybe even a couple smacks on the side, you know, and just... You know, and I'm really trying to... Just, uh, you know, you don't want to bang the crap out of it and damage or hurt your gun. Um, but you definitely want to, you know, you want to send some vibrations through it and, and make sure that that sucker's safe. You know, you don't, like I said, ever want the gun, gosh darn it, you don't ever want the gun going off uh, on accident, you know, or at the wrong time or anything. So that's the last step and the most important um, in, in the trigger tuning and adjustment process is to, to take some kind of step in testing out, you know, your gun and making sure that it's not going to accidentally go off uh, and hurt somebody or yourself or damage property or whatever, um, all because you've got your trigger set just incredibly too light. So let's see what the trigger's at now. Um, I, like I said, I made some adjustments in there when we had it out. And uh, I don't know exactly where I'm at, but I got a good feeling I'm, I'm real close to, to where I want to be. And that's because um, I, could, I counted the amount of threads that were protruding on that adjustment screw. Uh, so I know that I'm going to be close to, to where I like to be and where I, where I want to be. So I've already got the gun cocked and the safety off. Let me get my uh, pole gauge on here. And you don't need one of these by any means, uh, you know, to uh, adjust your trigger, you know. And and I never used to have one. Uh, you know, since I've got one, I've discovered that most of my triggers, uh, based on feel and what I found that I liked, uh, almost every adjustable trigger that I had, I had set just up under a pound. Um, so, like I said, you don't definitely need one of these. 
but it's a nice tool to have, uh, you know, and it's kind of cool just to see where you're at, you know, and, and to know just where you're at in, in your brake, you know, pressure and what it takes, you know, and stuff. So, all right, we got our gauge on. Let's see where we're at here. Seven point eight ounces. I don't know if you can see that there. Seven point eight ounces on that pole right there. And let me get my safety back on. So you can see that's about an eight ounce pole right there, um, just off where I where I left it sit, you know, without any adjustment. And I'm probably going to give it a little extra crank. Um, in the clockwise direction give that spring just a little more tension uh because like i said I, I prefer it to be between about nine and, and 12 or 13 ounces right right in that range right there so let me get this thing turned off all right so that's it. I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And uh, to all my brothers out there, happy shooting. And uh, we'll see you next time on the next video. All right.